Okay, so welcome back to uh, the video. Um, okay, so we were about to prove that uh, the um, closed banded interval uh, 0 to 1 is contained within here. Well, it's pretty much a tautology because, um, well, um, so remember the definition of the Vitali set. In fact, I've got a picture here. It was we had an element of every single equivalence class. So how do I get every... Um, so if you think about it, uh, 0, 1 was the equal to uh, the union over alpha of all of those equivalence classes we defined. So, if we got, if we got, um, so, the Vitali set contains an element of every single equivalence class. I claim that by adding Rn uh, for every possible rational in between 1 and minus 1, I will get every element of this equivalence class here. The reason is, if you think about it, so let's take one element of the Vitali set. Here we go, let's let this be one element, x, which is an element of the Vitali set. So if I take every possible rational between minus 1 and 1, and I add and subtract it from there, what would I get? I'll get loads and loads of numbers, and I'll build up like this, and I will get, eventually, every single possible element in that equivalence class, E alpha, where x was an element of this equivalence class, this was the representative we chose of this equivalence class to put into the Vitali set. The reason is that every element in this equivalence class, so if y is related to x, then y minus x was a rational number, So and, it, and because y and x are both elements of 0, 1, the maximum possible number they could be a part is either minus 1 or 1, i.e. if you've got 0 and 1. So, by so adding, and sub adding on every possible rational number in minus 1 to 1, you will go to every possible element of the equivalence class. You'll go to more than every possible element of the equivalence class, but at the very least you'll get every element of the equivalence class. You'll do this for every possible representation of the equivalence class. Uh, every pos you'll do it for uh, the Vitali set contains a representation of each equivalence class therefore you'll have every single element of every single equivalence class in this union here and therefore it must contain 0, 1 ok so that's that I'll get this piece of paper here right ok so we now have that the closed bounded interval 0, 1 is contained within this um, disjoint union, n is equal to 1 to infinity of v plus rn, which is in turn contained within minus 1 to 2. Okay, now, um, um, the Lebesgue, Lebesgue outer measure, to measure, is monotone, monotone and uh, so um, mu of um, 0 1 mu of 0 1 is less than or equal to uh, mu of all of these things here n is equal to 1 to infinity of v plus rn and let us note what it what are uh, okay so and also, this is less than or equal to the, the and I should there should be a star here. This is the outer measure, uh, mu star of uh, this uh, negative one to two. Okay, so we have this uh, property here, and we want to prove that. Um, oh wait, do I mean the outer measure there? So I'm trying to prove it's not measurable. So I'm trying to prove that uh, if we assume it's measurable. Ah, uh, yes, okay, right. So, if we assume it's measurable, we assumed uh, V was measurable, V was measurable, was measurable. That would imply V was an element of uh, the, Lebesgue, uh, the Lebesgue set, so LR, which is the set of all Lebesgue measurable uh, functions, which are uh, Lebesgue measurable sets, I'm so sorry, Lebesgue measurable sets, i.e. sets uh, where uh, which obey the property of being measurable, i.e. that for all 
uh, y is a subset of the real numbers, uh, mu star of y is equal to mu star of y intersection, um, intersection, it would imply v uh, plus mu star of y intersection v complement. So that's what it means to be mu star measurable. And if it's mu star measurable, then it implies that it's in this set, and this set you can prove it's quite a lengthy process, but it has a lot of properties. Uh, the um, Firstly, on this set, the function lambda star is countably additive, countably additive. Uh, it's monotone. Are there any other properties? I think those are the only two we're actually going to use here. Um, uh, so we've used monotonicity here. We've assumed uh, this and this. So we've assumed that uh, this is the Beg measurable because uh, v plus Rn is just a translation of the Wittenai set. I've assumed the Wittenai set is the Beg measurable. Therefore, I assume that the translations are. So we're going to use translation invariance as well. And the fact, and then for this union is um, is uh, Lebesgue measurable uh, because we're also using the fact that it forms a sigma algebra uh, of sets. So if all of these are Lebesgue measurable, then the union here is measurable. Uh, therefore, we can apply this result here. And now we're going to use the fact that it's countably additive uh, to split this into the fact that. Uh, v plus Rn is equal to lambda star, uh, sorry, it's equal to the sum, i is equal to 1, to, and I've somehow lost, changed from n to i, n is equal to 1 to infinity of lambda, and I keep wanting to write mu, lambda star uh, v plus Rn, there we go, okay, so uh, this uh, great big summation here is equal to this, uh, and basically because it's translation invariance, therefore this is equal to lambda star of v. Uh, so what we get is the sum uh, from n is equal to 1 to infinity of lambda star of v. Right, OK. Uh, so this is a positive number. Uh, well, this is a number, sorry. This is um, an element, and lambda star of v is an element of 0 to plus infinity. Uh, so we also know, we also look at this relation up here. Lambda star of 0, 1 is 1. Is less than or equal to the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of lambda star of v. And this measure here is free. So, stare at this for a moment. If this is 0, then what do you get? The whole thing is 0. Contradiction. If this is not 0, what is the sum of an infinite number of, uh, of a single positive real number? It's not bounded between 1 and 3, that's for sure. So whatever this is, you get a contradiction. Whatever this is, this is, you get a contradiction. Therefore, our assumption that it was the Lebesgue measurable, and as soon as we assumed it was the Lebesgue measurable, we assumed all of this because this came with it being the Lebesgue measurable. Whatever this is, if it is, you get a contradiction. So, the the Wittenai set cannot be the Lebesgue measurable. Sure. And in fact, the only thing we used really to prove that it was, uh, of course, the thing that we used to prove that it was to construct this set in the first place was the axiom of choice. And if the axiom of choice isn't true, this doesn't work. Uh, so, in fact, um, if the axiom of choice is not true and the continuum hypothesis is not true, then you can uh, you can create a perfectly reasonable, um, reasonable, str reasonable theory of s measure where the um, every every subset of the real line is the big measurable. You can just write that as an axiom into set theory, and, it and it's perfectly consistent with the rest of the axioms of set theory. So V cannot be the big measurable, but most mathematicians do believe in the axiom of choice. Um, so um, we're, we're using that here, and we have uh, constructed a set which is non the big measurable, uh, provably so.